Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial in the GoTo Shell series. In this series we'll discuss tips, tricks, and techniques for shell scripting in five minutes or fewer. Before we begin, first, due to its ubiquity and my experience with it, we're going to use Bash, specifically version 4 and higher. Secondly, I'm not perfect, so if you do spot any errors or mistakes on my part, let me know in the comments or by email and I'll try to get that corrected in the video. Welcome again everyone. Today's lesson is going to be about printing messages using shell scripts. Uh, this is helpful because, like other command line programs, if you can't print text to someone, you can't give any sort of feedback because there is no real GUI. Uh, so printing messages is pretty common, and it's actually quite simple to do in shell scripting. There are a couple of caveats. Remember today we're going to be talking about bash mostly, so there are a couple of special bashisms there, but I'll try to avoid those and just give you a general overview of the two types of message printing utilities that you have. Let's go ahead and get to the training VM and get started on this. Fire up the timer. All right, we're rolling. Okay, so like many other shells, uh, Bash offers two different commands for printing messages. One is echo and the other is printf. It's important to understand before we delve into those that these are both built-in commands, meaning Bash only has to issue a jump to another function inside of its own binary. That means it doesn't have to spawn a whole process to do this. There's a huge performance hit if it did have to do that. So with bash at least these are built in and you get a little bit of a, little bit of a performance gain from doing that. So the first one we'll talk about is echo. Over here on my training VM you'll notice that we have uh, a blank file here and another file that has a, just a simple line of text in it that we'll look at later. But for now, we're just going to open up this empty shell script and get going with echo. So to use echo, you just type echo, the command, and then you type what you want to print. So one, two, three, four. Now if I write this and I go to my other window and run that script, we get one, two, three, and four. It's important to notice two things happened here. One is we got a new line character. I didn't ask it to do that. Echo just automatically does that, at least in most versions of Bash anyway. Be sure to test this on your system. The other thing is that you're probably thinking it printed out exactly what we typed, but it didn't. It actually read argument one, argument two, argument three, and argument four, and then concatted all of them together and separated them with a space. If you want to preserve the spacing, you have to quote everything so that it shows up as a single argument. Notice I put a bunch of spaces in and nothing changed. That's because the echo command still sees this as four positional arguments that have to be evaluated. If I surround them with quotes, we can, yeah, there we go, get what we were expecting. Notice that we're still getting the new line though. If you want to disable the new line in echo, you just use dash in, okay? So with that out of the way, we can talk about the last thing and that is evaluating backslashes. Normally, echo will not evaluate a backslash. So if I wanted to put a tab here at the beginning and a couple of new lines here at the end, it, it doesn't do it. They're literally displayed. And it isn't because these are single quotes. Even if these were double quotes, it doesn't change anything because this is not interpolation that we're dealing with here. Okay, we're dealing with the fact that echo does not evaluate these to mean anything special. To do that, you have to use the dash E. So there, we got our tab and our extra new line characters. The other thing that we can do, if we don't want to use echo, is use printf. Printf is pretty cool. It's very powerful. I am not going to sit here and try to explain to you guys everything you can do with printf. There are lots of manuals online. The important thing to note is that bash follows the C uh, printf1. Go look that up on Google and you'll find most of the information you need on how to use it. But basically you give it a format string like item1, item2 separated by a space and then you give it some arguments. There we go and it prints out what you told it to. In position one, it put arg one. In position two, it put arg two. It's very simple stuff. You'll notice by default it doesn't give you a new line. You would have to add that in there yourself if you wanted. 
Uh, it gives you a lot of control, but frankly, it's kind of convoluted to use. To make things a little more tricky, Bash has the ability to use dash V. This is the only option that it supports, and that is you can put the name of a variable that you want this output to go to rather than to the screen. So you notice we ran it this time and we didn't get any output. It's because it got crammed into this variable. If I, ironically, echo that variable out, we will now see our information. And notice that echo is what gave us our new line here, not the variable printf. So, 30 seconds left. There's really only one other thing that I want to make clear here, is that printf and echo are not the only tools that can send text to the screen. They're simply commands that exist inside of Bash, and they write to standard out, which ends up showing up on your terminal. Any program that you put here, for example, if we cat that some junk file here, will end up being displayed out here. So that pretty much ends our time. Let's close that out. Okay. There are lots of resources for understanding how Echo works and how printf works. I highly suggest you start with just the man page. All you have to do is type man bash and then go search for it. It's pretty straightforward stuff. There were two arguments that I ran into when I started researching this. One of them said that performance wise, <laughs> printf was somehow magically faster than echo. Guys, that simply isn't true. There might be some situations where it's faster. It might be marginally, and I'm talking microsecond differences here. It's really not something that at a basic level of learning you need to worry about. So when you're reading, be aware of elitist and people telling you, you know, oh, there's a performance issue. No, there, there really isn't. Not one that you need to worry about right now. The other argument that I ran into regularly was that you should only ever use printf because it's more powerful, it's more portable, it's been standardized for quite a while. I would say if you're learning or have the time to memorize printf, go ahead. It's not that difficult because anything you can do with echo something, if you could type right, you can simply do with printf and a single string formatter. I'll leave it up to you as to whether or not you think this is worth arguing over. Printf is undeniably powerful, but you're going to commonly see echo because it's just so simple to use. All right, guys, that's enough of that. Thank you all very much for watching. If you don't mind helping me out, give me a thumbs up. It lets me know if the video is helpful. If you have comments, even if it's criticism or anything like that, put it down on there. It helps other people, can spark conversations with other users, help spread that knowledge. And if you want to help me share videos in the future, hit the subscribe button. It lets me reach more people and get the word of mouth out. Thank you very much and have a great day.